Kevin, and he's just been doing an outstanding job the entire year. Coach Grobo says just to be always involved with the game, and if Kevin ever goes down, to be ready to go in right away. And I had my my couple chances at San Diego that uh, they kind of made the season for me there, so I feel good about that. And in case you've forgotten what he's talking about, let me refresh your memory. Kevin Martin goes down in the San Diego State game. Trent comes in, and he picks off quarterback Todd Santos, a turnover that eventually leads to a field goal. I was kind of numb. It was like... I I don't know, it was just a totally different feeling when I saw that ball going over the guy's head. And, uh, and it was like anybody could have caught it, I guess. Like uh, Coach DeBerry says that his 98-year-old grandmother could have caught it because it was just right into my arms. And I was lucky that I caught it because I was still in a state of shock right then. And uh, so after it hit me, it was just like everything just started getting narrower and narrower. And uh, I started running up the field and I don't know who blocked the intended receiver but he wasn't there anymore and then I just started up the sideline and uh, the guys just did an excellent job of blocking and uh, I've been getting a lot of ribbing because I got knocked out by the quarterback but I was so numb by that point in time that it didn't matter I guess at that time so. Trent is a 6'5", 206 pound senior from Janesville, Wisconsin who jumped around a few schools before he eventually decided to come to Air Force. I went to Brown University in the Ivy League, a uh, couple schools in Wisconsin where I'm originally from, and then um, South Dakota and South Dakota State also. Why, uh, why Air Force? Why was that your final decision? Well, I guess the biggest determining factor was the education that I wanted to receive, and I, I saw that in the Air Force Academy. And the second big factor was that there was a chance to fly. And of course, that's what it's all about anyway. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas. And I know, Coach, you said Trent was hurt a lot of the uh, spring training. Well, Trent missed our whole spring practice last year, John, and uh, then came back in the fall. We weren't really sure that he was going to play, but I tell you, he's such a, he was so committed to the team. He wanted to be such an important part of it, and, uh, you know, I don't think anybody realizes tremendous pain that he practiced with and the sacrifice that he made to be a part of this year's team. But I'm telling you one thing, he is a very talented athlete, and, boy, if he just had one more year, I mean, he's just really becoming into his own, and, uh, you know, he has really given so much to Falcon and football, and particularly in our special teams area, and we appreciate his efforts so much. All right, Coach, now for our assistant coach feature, we're going to meet uh, another person who really helps you out every week and throughout the year, and that, of course, is strength and conditioning coach Jack Braley. Assistant coach Jack Braley first came to the Air Force Academy back in 1965 as an assistant under Ben Martin, where he served for 14 years. Then in 1981, he became the school's first full-time strength and conditioning coach, position he's held ever since and a lot of the success the football team has had in recent years is because the Falcons are much bigger and much stronger. When I first started five or six years ago we had uh, eight guys on the football team that could bench press 300 pounds. Last year we had 52 uh, and that includes backs and ends and what have you. We had uh, a few people that could legitimately squat 400 at that time. Chad Hennings has our record now at 605 pounds, and we've got four or five guys right in there close to that. The strength and conditioning programs at the academy are run year-round, and they are also becoming very scientific. One of the things that uh, conditioning programs involve now is it's not just straight lifting. There's you cycle your program, you do different amounts of weight at different parts of the year. The, they have to be instructed to when to lift heavy, when to lift light. Uh, they need to have some plyometrics, which are jumping, bounding, uh, leaping type activities that work on uh, reflexes, and make them faster and quicker. Jack, who works with all the Academy's varsity sports, has been able not only to get the linemen and linebackers in the program, but all the Falcons are involved. The best uh, plaques that we put together was the position, the best by position board. Uh, prior to that, the backs and the ends and the quarterbacks and the small people, you know, they, they weren't in so interested in how much they could squat or bench because they felt like they were never going to have an opportunity to uh, set a record. You know, they're competing with guys that are 250, 60 pounds, maybe a in some instances 60 to 80 pounds bigger than they are but when you put it up there and you say this is the best halfback this is the best fullback this is the best quarterback 
they were flocking in here saying, oh, I can do better than that. And uh, so we had a lot more competition by position. Jack and wife Carolyn can be very proud of their whole family, which has close ties to the Air Force Academy. Both sons attended the Air Force Academy. Mark is the oldest, and he's back here teaching English in the English department. He got his master's at Stanford. He's interested in a doctoral program, if he can get to that sometime. Um, Jeff is the middle one. He's uh, down at Little Rock, Arkansas. He flies 130s, and he has three children, so I have three grandchildren. Um, Andrew, Philip, and Elizabeth. And then Jill, my daughter, she married uh, Mark Jackson, who played linebacker for us and attended the academy here. Uh, the academy gives you a lot of satisfaction. It's great working with the cadets. And we have a super uh, administration here. We have a great coaching staff. and uh, the, All the staff people that you work with are just tremendous people. And speaking of a tremendous person, that's Jack Braley. i tell you one thing. I thank the Lord every day for him because I tell you, he just does a tremendous job. And I've said this a thousand times. I really feel that, uh, that the foundation and the success of Falcon football has been right in that weight room. And, uh, you know, John, our players will be back down there Monday. And, boy, you better believe as soon as they get through with exams and we get back here at the first of the year, we'll jump right back in there in a very, very strenuous and a very competitive off-season football program. We put a lot of stock in it. Just as much work goes into that weight room as there is out there on that football field. And if you don't do the portion of the amount of work there in that weight room, then uh, the chances of playing out there on that football field uh, are not very good because it takes a certain level of strength to play Division One football today. All right, Coach. Well, when we come back, we'll get out there and meet some aspiring young people who want to come to the academy and want to be a part of Falcon football. All righty, we will remind everybody that we will have another show. We'll have a year-end show involved in the recruiting. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how long you're actually out on the road and, and you know, what you're doing. Well, John, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I'll leave early uh, uh, Sunday morning and go to uh, San Antonio, then from there to Houston, to Dallas, and on to Los Angeles for a couple of days, and then end up in uh, San Francisco next week, and then get home on Saturday, and then hopefully we'll have an opportunity, our family, to go back to South Carolina to see our family, but uh, all of our coaches will be coming in. They've been out now for two weeks, and uh, then, of course, as soon as we get back after the Christmas holidays, it starts all over again, and then we'll be having young men coming in to visit the campus and, uh, you know, and, and, and seeing uh, our great facilities here and visiting with our coaches and with our academic people and really getting a good feel for the academy, but this really goes on to the 1st of March. Wow, a long time and very important for you. Coach, and uh, we're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, folks, we're going to take a look back at the 1986 Air Force football season. We'll have that right after this. Can you think of a name for this chicken? Season, but not maybe a great season. Well, a season that, uh, you know, we had a winning season, but it's certainly not up to the expectations that we have in our football program, John. And, you know, some of our goals eluded us this year, but you can come bet we'll come back and establish a lot of those goals. And uh, to be honest with you, we can't wait for spring training. Of course, our players need a little bit of break to go home and be with their families over the Christmas holidays. But then as soon as they get back, the very first day they're back, we'll get into our off-season program. And Coach Braley will have some surprises for them. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to be back. And the Falcons will be back. And we expect every year to be in a postseason game. And, uh, you know, we're going to certainly get that trophy back here to the academy. I promise you that. All right, Coach. Let's take a look back now at the 1986 season. The thunder of Air Force football was heard again in 1986 as the Falcons continued their winning ways. For the fifth straight year, they had a winning record. Plus, a number of players received postseason awards and honors. Going into the season, there were a lot of question marks facing head coach Fisher DeBerry and his staff that have now been together for over three years. Graduated from the most successful team in academy history that went 12-1 and, and finished fifth in the country with a win over Texas in the Blue Bonnet Bowl were 28 seniors, including consensus All-American safety Scott Thomas and Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year quarterback Bart Weiss. It was going to be a tough act to fall. The 1986 was an exciting season for the Falcons. After opening their schedule on August 30th at Falcons Stadium with a come-from-behind 24-17 victory over a very good Hawaii team, the Air Force proved in Game 2 against UTEP in El Paso that even though they were a very young team, they were a very poised and confidence ball club. With 150 remaining in the game, they went 53 yards 
the key play of fourth and six when senior Pat Evans went up the middle for a first down. And then with only six seconds remaining, junior place kicker Mike Johnson connected on a 44-yard field goal as AFA won a thriller 23 to 21. That UTEP victory might have been the most thrilling finish, but it certainly wasn't the greatest comeback of the season. Playing on a Friday night in Salt Lake City against the University of Utah, Air Force not only had their greatest comeback, but one of the most unbelievable comebacks in college football history. At halftime, the Falcons had fallen behind 35 to 14. Most teams probably would have given up, but not Air Force. In the second half, the Falcons scored 31 unanswered points. After the game, there was a lot of celebrating in the locker room. There was also a lot of belief in playing as a team. Hey, that was a team victory. We never said die. And that's the happiest locker room you've ever seen in there. What, what did he say at halftime?